So Prince Charming's regal carousel has that name for a reason and let's find out why. Hi everyone, welcome back to That Disney Girl. If you're new here, hey, my name is Alessa, and today we're gonna be getting back to basics because it's been a quick minute since we have discussed attraction backstories over at Disney World, and if you have seen any of my videos before, you know that that is something I am super passionate about. So today, I wanted to dive into the backstory of the carousel over at Magic Kingdom because I figured there must be something relevant here and wanted to see if it had anything to do with the backstory of Cinderella as a whole. And I mean, when we're looking at the castle and everything around the castle, it really focuses on Cinderella. So I thought that was really interesting that this carousel had the name Prince Charming in it, which meant that it likely had something to do with Prince Charming. And that's a character that we don't get to explore much too often. So today we're gonna do just that. I think something that people don't realize about just the entire facade of the castle and all of its surroundings, like the courtyard, the front, and the back of it, is that it has so much innate detail that goes with Cinderella, but we just kind of see that castle and we're blown away by its majestic beauty that we don't get to see all of these little, little details that really make it so special. From the inside of Cinderella's royal suite in the castle, which by the way, if you would like to see footage of that suite and everything you need to know, if you get the chance to ever stay there, I will post a video down below that I made and it has all of those details to just walking through that breezeway, walking around the fountains, looking at all of the carvings inside of the restaurant, and then finally coming to the carousel. There are so many little details there that really pertain to Cinderella and talk about the film story and then also move us forward to where Cinderella and Prince Charming are now today. Okay, so like I already mentioned, this is an attraction that opened back in 1971. It did have a different name when it opened, but the idea of a carousel in Disney World was something that Walt always found really special. I know we're talking about Magic Kingdom right now, but of course, Disneyland has one as well. And if you know anything about Walt, you know that he loved to bring his daughters to Griffith Park and watch them go on the carousel there. And it was that moment of spending time with his family that he figured there needed to be a place where families should be able to come and have this feeling and this experience of spending time together around attractions, which is basically the thing that led him to create Disneyland. So carousels are very important. And the special thing about this carousel is that it is humongous and it also wasn't just made for Magic Kingdom. It was built in 1917 and had been passed on from different parks and amusement parks until it finally found its home inside of Magic Kingdom. Of course, when it got to Magic Kingdom, the Imagineers went to town on that thing and made sure that it was going to become as regal as it could possibly be. Every single horse that you see on that carousel, which there are 90 by the way, are all very specific and Imagineers changed each single one to almost be like a fingerprint where no two are alike, when before there were lots that were kind of matching. So in this instance, you had all of these horses that were all different because they had to be, and we'll discuss why soon because it ties to the backstory. And when I say that Imagineers made this carousel literally look amazing. I mean, they're using 23 carat leaf gold all over the thing. And there are over 2,300 sparkling lights on it, which is why when you go there at nighttime to watch Happily Ever After behind the castle, it looks so magical and beautiful. Alrighty, but in 2010, when New Fantasyland was released, Disney decided that they were going to update the carousel and update the carousel's backstory, name, everything as a whole. Originally, the attraction's name was Cinderella's Golden Carousel, but with the refurbishment, it ended up changing kind of owners, which fits with the entire backstory that we're gonna discuss, and it became Prince Charming's Regal Carousel. And also, before we dive into what Prince Charming did, I just wanna kinda preface that you should never try this in your own home. Definitely do not build what I'm about to explain because, um, Prince Charming could get hit, and if he gets hurt, it's okay because he's fake, but if you get hurt, you're, um, you're gonna bleed, so don't do it. So the way this backstory works is we are going to be looking past the film's ending. So Cinderella and Prince Charming are married and they're living their happily ever after fairy tale inside of their luxurious beautiful castle and Prince Charming has started to take up a few different hobbies. And one of those hobbies that Prince Charming so desperately wanted to master was going to be jousting. This is something that he never had time for before, and now that he had all of this time on his hands since his life seemed to calm right down with the um, joining of him and Cinderella, he decided that he was going to take on this hobby, but he needed to learn how to be a jouster if he wanted to be a good one. 
And as you can imagine, even though he was one of the richest people in the land, you can't really just hire human bodies and expect them to be jousted when you don't know exactly what you're doing. So Prince Charming decided he was going to create a sort of contraption that was going to help him practice without hurting the lives of the people around him. And the horses around him, might I add. So on some spare land just far away from the castle, Prince Charming built this circular platform and on it he made these wooden little horses that someone could sit on top of. He made sure that the platform was going to be able to spin in circles and then he also made sure that his trainer would be able to sit on this like wooden horse concoction that he created with the little jousting stick. I honestly have no idea what that thing's called. I probably should have looked up maybe a few more jousting references, but I didn't, so this is what you get. So the trainee would sit on top of that horse and the thing would spin and then Prince Charming would sit on his horse and he would run opposite to the platform so that like if this was fake wooden horse and this was real horse, they would like kind of collide in front of each other and then he was going to be able to ring spear. Again, I don't know what that is, but I will pop in video footage or video images, something right now so that you can at least understand what it is. But this is how he would start to practice and learn how to joust. Okay, I did some research for you guys and apparently ring spearing is a very popular event in jousting where you try to get your spear in a little ring hanging off the tree. So I guess like the trainer was probably holding um, like a little ring sort of thing and then uh, Prince Charming needed to joust through it, I assume. But it became something that was really popular and people loved to come watch Prince Charming practice and this carousel became this like ring spearing center that everyone loved to congregate to. And like I just mentioned, everyone loved this carousel. They thought it was so cool and Prince Charming noticed this. He saw that a lot of the townspeople really enjoyed it and he figured there had to be a way that he could get everyone to experience this sort of new ride that he created. So what Prince Charming did was he decided he was going to create a even more beautiful carousel in the center of his courtyard, which is the carousel that we get to ride every time we go to Magic Kingdom. He decided he was going to make this one look a lot better than his jousting practice carousel. All of the horses were going to be gold plated and beautiful and luxurious and people were going to have the chance to sit on it and take a ride. And right now you might be thinking, does Cinderella tie into this story as a whole at all? And the answer is kind of. Prior to this backstory being made, everyone thought that there was a specific horse on the carousel that was Cinderella's. This horse is actually named Cindy, and it is going to be the only horse to have a bow tied onto its tail, and everyone assumed that this was Cinderella's horse. But with the creation of the new backstory, nothing was mentioned about this horse belonging to Cinderella, and it had never been confirmed by Disney Parks. But there were two Disney officials who worked on the carousel that kind of went against this whole theory that fans were creating, and they do have some pretty solid points. And what I'm about to explain is literally so technical and it is the reason that I love Imagineering so much. And that's because everything I'm about to say is so based in reality and like hierarchy and structure. And the fact that they're placing this into a fictionalized backstory about a freaking carousel is literally magical. So in an interview with Isle Vought and John Hench, two people that worked on the carousel, they are the two that refuted this kind of notion that this horse could belong to Cinderella, and there are a few reasons why. Number one, if it was Cinderella's horse, it would definitely be decorated to a higher standard than Cindy actually is. Likely it would have some gold plating on its shoes, there would be a lot more regal aspects to it since it belonged to a princess. Also, if you see where Cindy is placed on the carousel, she's one of the horses in the inner rows. And someone with the status of Cinderella would never have a horse placed on an inner row just because she was so high up in the kingdom. And their last argument of defense against Cindy belonging to Cinderella is that Cinderella's never rode a horse. From what we know about Cinderella and the films, the books, we've never seen her on top of a horse. And considering she was being treated as a housemaid before she became a princess, it's a little bit of a reach to assume she had the resources and training to learn how to ride a horse. But I mean, who knows? It is the only horse to have a golden bow on its tail, so it's probably special for a reason. And I think it's fun to believe that it could have belonged to Cinderella. And if you have any reasons to believe that it does, that could refute some of the things I just said, definitely comment them down below because I would love to be proven wrong. But 
holds up, don't worry. We still are going to incorporate a little bit of Cinderella into this carousel. Prince Charming made sure that when he was going to be putting this out for all of the townsfolk, that he wanted to kind of commemorate him and Cinderella's love story in some sort of a way. So when you look up and you are riding this magical carousel, you're going to be able to see 18 beautiful murals that are going to tell the story of Cinderella and Prince Charming. And on here is going to be the only photo that you can see of Cinderella and Prince Charming running into their carriage after their wedding to escape on to the rest of their life. So I mean that's basically it when it comes to the backstory of the carousel but I just thought that it was really fun that there is so much detail that's put into such a classic and trivial ride that you can find at theme parks all over the globe. But by doing this Disney still managed to specify and narrow it down and make it very specific and unique even though it is quite a common attraction. And if you have anything to add to the backstory of the carousel or just kind of Cinderella's castle and the courtyard, anything Cinderella in this area in general, I would love to hear some more Easter eggs or just what you think about this attraction, how much you love it, how beautiful it looks at nighttime. Let's definitely keep that discussion going below in the comments. And if you like hearing about all of this dis nerdy content, you gotta make sure that you like the video and you gotta make sure that you subscribe. We try to put out a video each and every single week on the channel and you won't know if we do unless you hit that bell, so make sure you do that too. But until next week, folks, I will see you all real soon. Bye, everyone.